that's completely false uh, uh, and it is you know it's just another attack to shut me down uh, the colonial system is, is all about shutting ladies and gentlemen do you think that was appropriate the way she went about that if I was preaching in a church and that woman come running in there like that I'd have it I'd have it I'd have to take her taken out. It was rude, obnoxious. It was not representing the Aboriginal people. It's an attack. Oh, she's got everything but a spear in her hand. And basically, what she's saying is, if I had my way, I would throw it at the king. I would. This is the malicious mindset of these times. The radical, fanatical rogue mindset of these types. These people, the Aboriginal people, the dignified ones at least, say that she does not represent the Aboriginal people. She certainly doesn't represent the Australian people. Being black women down in this country, they've got a very good track record of that. You, Uh, for those that don't agree with what I have said and what I have done, uh, I can tell you... Yeah, was, that's the majority. Now she's going to try and pick up a handful of stragglers that she's saying supporting her. Now there are elders, there are grassroots Aboriginal people across this country and Torres Strait Islander people who are just so proud. They say that it's what? lit a fire back in their belly uh, and they want to join the resistance. I've uh, been con Okay, so this is this, an Australian senator that's trying to run a resistance against the people she represents. Do you know she's against she's against us? Okay, she's against us. There's no sense in what she's saying. I mean, she hates white people. That's basically what she's saying. If you're not Aboriginal, you're an enemy. You're part of um, the destruction of the Aboriginals. That's complete and utter nonsense. Contacted by elders who have said, particularly uh, a Ngunnawal uh, elder who said, I wish you had have told me you were going to do that because I would have walked right beside you and done exactly the same thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, she would have had stacks of people that knew about what she was doing and nobody would dare go alongside it. These people can run into the parliament whenever they like and disrupt the meetings, but it's not gonna change anything because the Australian government is doing everything they can to look after the Aboriginal people. The Ab Aboriginal people get way more benefits than what the poor old Aussie, Aussie people do. I could have, you know, my father, would not admit that we were part Aboriginal. And I, I look back at it now, my nieces and nephews are um, part of it due to their ancestry, but I missed out on so many benefits. I missed out on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. So I've just been overwhelmed with uh, supporting messages. Uh, I don't listen to the noise of those who have chosen to assimilate into the colonial system. Right, that okay, so she's also been contacted and abused as well. Right, this woman is a, com she is so up herself. She, this is going to turn around and bite her in the ass so badly. That's their decision. I've decided to be a black sovereign woman and continue uh, our fight uh, against the colony uh, and for, for justice for our people. All right. Look at this. Fear is she's part of the bloody colony. Her father's, a, her father's an English Irishman. Oh, God. Statistics. Yeah. It tells a very uh, bad story about the, the plight of our people in okay. this country. I will come to some parliamentary oh, criticism it's that's been wasteful. made of you, but I did just want to pick up on the King's speech given that day on the Monday in the Great Hall. Do you acknowledge, having heard it of course, that King Charles asserts a strong familiarity, uh, even affinity for Indigenous culture and heritage in this country, as I listen to it, because of his many visits 
you know, to this country since he was a boy. In that sense, I suppose the question is, did you get the wrong guy? My view of this woman, as you look at her sitting there, she's so self-indignant, self-centered and prideful. I think she's lost touch with the way in which she's portraying herself. Really? Well, that's called smoothing the dying pillow, Greg. Uh, you know, we'll just say some niceties, niceties along the way while we continue to commit genocide against First Peoples in this country. 24,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children in out-of-home care in, in 2024. Okay, viewers, where are the parents? Where are the Aboriginal parents? We know that there's tremendous negligence and alcohol abuse, substance abuse, uh, domestic abuse amongst these people. Um, it's not because of us, it's because of their way. Now you can try and blame us and blame shift and all the rest of it, but they've got to take responsibility and accountability for the way they parent, for the way they manage their children, for the negligence that has happened within that um, way in which they're raised. And if they can't manage things correctly, this is part of the consequence of that. You can't blame other people for the negligence of others, when, particularly when the nation of Australia, as I keep saying, and I know there's a lot of, I know Aboriginals that work in the Aboriginal industry. They're getting millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. 600 deaths in custody, no one ever held accountable. The, the suicide rate is, is off the charts. The land and water theft and destruction is, you know, what do we have left? Uh, I'm sorry, Charlie, but you can't come here and think that you can say a few nice words about our people while you still have stolen goods. You are in receipt of stolen goods which makes you complicit in theft, which, which I don't think which, anybody should be praising and... All right, which goods you know, specifically uh, are you identifying in this country? <laughs> yeah, we would just to elaborate on that, which goods in particular? Uh, well, we're talking about the, the stolen wealth. So we're talking about uh, our, our remains that our old people have been flying overseas for, for, for decades longer than I've been alive, demanding that we have our remains back in our own country so that we can put our people to rest in their own country. Do you see how crazy that is, viewers? Okay, so if I'm an Aboriginal and I go to work for, I don't know, Donald Trump in the United States or in England, somebody in England, and I die, is she going to give a shit about whether my remains come back or not? Can you see how far-fetched this really is? It's a fantasy. An absolute fantasy. A pathology. A radical um, pathology. Oh, my God. Uh, the, you know, the stolen wealth that uh, they've taken from this country. We are the sickest and poorest people in our own country. And well, whose fault is that? This is what I'm trying to say. We are known as the country of the disabled because there is more money going out to the disabled in this country than what the revenue, all of the revenue of this country put together will be able to cover in a couple of years' time. And that includes the money that... that, that the hundreds of millions of dollars that are given to the Aboriginal people. Somebody needs to pull this lady aside and say, hang on a minute. He has the audacity to sit up there uh, wow. like he, he, you know, like he's a king or something. Well, this is, see, why does he sit up there like he's the king? Because he is the king. That's why. But he's not the king of this oh, country. Oh he's God. not sovereign to this country. Oh we are sovereign. And to be sovereign, you have to be from this land, of this land. And okay. he's, he's not that. Let me take Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to somebody that's half English. She's half English, part Irish. She's not full Aboriginal. Can you see? Look, guys. A lot of trouble in family life, in relationships, in 
work and all this other stuff is when you don't buy into somebody's fantasy about the way they perceive things, right? They've got facts that they think are real, but they're not, okay? And if you don't buy into that fantasy, then you get this smug, arrogant, wayward, foolish mentality come at you. We ain't seen nothing yet what these people are capable of because they're coming from all classes and cultures and um, left wokest mentality. To that asserted sovereignty because it has been questioned. You may have noticed as recently as this morning by Bridget McKenzie, the Nationals Senator from your own state. Did you, Lydia Thorpe, renounce your sworn parliamentary affirmation to be faithful and bear true allegiance to the monarch? Did you renounce that in the comments you delivered in the Great Hall. Well, apparently, according to Lydia, and she'll explain this herself, she never, she never made an allegiance. Uh, I don't remember uh, doing that. Uh, and I swore allegiance to the Queen's hairs. If you listen close enough, it wasn't her heirs. It was her hairs that I was... Uh, um, giving my allegiance to and now that you know they're not no longer here I don't know where that stands but okay so it's all right for these people to die and all the rest of it but if an aboriginal dies we're going to fly, fly planes and send boats and rescue missions to get back people's bones ladies and gentlemen you've got to understand how how far-fetched this is she's just said that she's she has forfeited her position in the Senate by way of admitting that she hasn't sworn correctly um, into the Senate. She's just undermined her own authority. Right, so what's uh, the significance no, of that? I'm not my job. I'm right. not resigning. What's the significance of that mispronunciation? I don't know if that's the right description, but in using that phrase, and you, you did deliberately say hairs as you swore your affirmation in the Senate. What's the import of that? Does it invalidate your oath of affirmation or your, your statement Absolutely. of affirmation? I'm not a I'm not a um, I'm not an expert on the no, you're not a member of the Senate. She's a rebel. She's an intruder. She doesn't, she, the only reason she wants to be there is to have this oxygen that she's getting from the position. You can see she's indignant, prideful, uh, a bully. She's of no benefit to the Australian people. I don't think the Aboriginal people either. Colonial laws are the only um, experience I've had with colonial laws is the violence of them and the violence of pledging allegiance to the oppressor is is absolutely out of date and absolutely a disgusting thing to make someone do you 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 know this country wants to swear allegiance to a king from another country where whose ancestors have been responsible for massacres so many massacres in this country killing our children and ladies and gentlemen she's not telling you about the massacres that the aboriginal people inflicted on themselves and i'm not trying to be partial or uh, justify um, the war that the colonists had when they when they were met by the aboriginals but that's part of taking a land they were conquered. The bottom line of it is the Aboriginal people were conquered by the colony. Now, she's not prepared to accept that. That's on her, but you can't take back what's been lost. It's not like they've been abused and neglected and everything she's saying. The government's poured millions into the air, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into the Aboriginal people and they've been unable um, in some ways to reculturalize and that's fine but if she's going to sit there as though she's a full 
blooded Aboriginal without any, you know, English in her at all, she's having herself on. I went out with an Aboriginal woman in high school for a couple of years, and she was nothing like this woman. It was just quickly, this is what a full-blooded Aboriginal woman looks like. Okay. Lydia Thorpe is possibly, well, more equally as white as she is aborig Aboriginal. There's the real deal Aboriginals. There. They're the real deal Aboriginals. God, what's wrong with this woman, for goodness sake? Now, women, why would I, with my hand on my heart, kneel to an oppressor? So a you're saying, thief, so you're saying you didn't do that. Are uh, you sorry to interrupt? There's a slight lag between us, Lydia. But are you suggesting that you did not do that in August 2022 on the floor of the Senate chamber? That you made no, you know, valid affirmation allegiance. to faithfully bear true allegiance to the monarch? Look, it's no, it's no secret. I don't like the colony. I don't like the king and what he represents. And I don't like the fact that I've got to swear to an oppressor to do my job to get justice for my people. Now- Well, you know what she needs to do. She needs to get out of the Australian government, out of the Senate, and go serve the Aboriginal people in a civilian um, position. Because she's running off the, the financial power of our tax money with an agenda that has absolutely nothing to benefit the taxpayer including the aboriginal people i am there for one reason and one reason only and it's not to make friends it's not to get re-elected it is to get justice for my people and i think what is happening here is that we're being sidetracked to look over here rather than what i was saying mm. and what i was saying is we want what that king has that is ours and we want him to return it in good faith if you want to talk niceties then give us back what you stole it's it's quite simple okay do you expect censure or any form of parliamentary privilege process to be moved against you how would you propose to defend yourself if it does happen when you're next back in the senate well we have to remember Greg, that, you know, black women across this country are missing and murdered right across this country. So are white ones. So are white ones. Now, a lot of those black women that are missing and murdered are probably at the hands of Aboriginal men as well. She's completely out of order. Completely She's got tunnel vision. She's a radical fanatic and it's unnecessary. The media don't talk about that. It's not a priority for this government. If the media don't talk about it, how come we all know about it? In a lot of ways, the media is doing the Aboriginal people, uh, giving them some grace because a lot of the, the abuse towards the Aboriginal women is from the Aboriginal men. And I'm a black woman. You're not. So of course. You're the... not. You're part, you're part white. You're part English. You're part Irish. We just had your father tell us. She needs to be kicked out of the Senate on a dot so she can go and serve this um, idealisation that she's made up without the blessing of the real Aboriginal people and see how far she gets. We shouldn't be funding this woman. Parliament and its and its you know racist um, ways will try to shut me down for speaking truth. It's been happening for over 200 years. The Greg. reason why they'll shut her down is because she's not serving uh, Australia 
for the Aboriginals in a way that's going to be fruitful because the Aboriginals can't get any more out of the Australian government. They're getting hundreds of millions. They've got so many communities and support systems and Aboriginal this and Indigenous that and this, that and all the other. They need, the, the Aboriginal elders need to confront this woman and tell her to stand down. Something has snapped in this woman's mind. She is just completely out of order. So I uh, will see that as another opportunity to expose this country for what it really is. If they try to shut me down. How dare she? How dare she? We lived in, we, do you know what? People from all over the world, all over the world, want to come to this country, right? And she's saying she wants to expose this country for what it is. All she's doing is exposing herself for what it, what it is. She's half white. Well, I've got international exposure, I've got international allies, and I will keep them uh, briefed on this, this parliament uh, and any other senator or, or politician that wants to shut me down. I'm sure we can continue that conversation when you're next back in Canberra and we'll await further developments around whatever it is that the Senate does or doesn't decide to do, Lydia Thorpe, but we do appreciate you fronting for a bit of a recap about what went on on Monday. You're always welcome. Thanks again. Thank you, Greg. And this is a revolution and there's lots more to come. Yeah, there's going to be lots more to come. I think the Aboriginal elders, the ones that understand the situation as it is, um, would be completely out of sorts with this woman. She's forgotten that she is part of the colony by blood. Um, all I can say is, as being part Aboriginal myself, I don't want her to represent the Aboriginal people like this. It's not necessary. There's too many benefits and gains being given to us um, from the colony <laughs> in the form of you name it, you can have it. And this woman is completely, completely misrepresented not only the Australian country and the way in which people are trying to make it, the, possibly one of the greatest countries in the world, um, she's taken the whole thing for granted. Kick her out of the Senate, let her go be a civilian and see how far she gets for the Aboriginal people because she's doing the Australian people and the Aboriginal people harm. <laughs>